Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a helicopter in Autodesk Fusion 360. So thank you so much everybody, we have reached over 10,000 views for both the aircraft and the helicopter combined and this is great news, it's awesome to see, thank you so much for the support. Also a big shout out to Alan who has become my first Patreon subscriber. He subscribed to the gold membership where you get a range of benefits from this channel. Um, if you'd like to support me as well, you can do so from as little as one pound a month on my Patreon and you can go check that out in the link in the description below. I've also released a new single on my music channel. If that's something that you're interested in, please do go check that out as well. Right, so let's get started into Fusion. Great, so in the last video, we worked on the tail section. Now in the tail section, all we did was we sort of had this cross section at the back and we, we drew a path and a guide rail and we just swept it across. And it did a pretty decent job. And as always, if there were any modifications, you can always go back in time and change those. Now in this video, we are going to be focusing on the empanot section. So the empanot section is basically just this section at the back over here. Okay, so before we get started, let's actually have a look at what the empanage looks like. So from the side view, we've got this kind of like a boomerang shape, but this is basically our vertical stabilizer. If you look at it from the top, we can see this geometry that looks like a wing, and this is our horizontal stabilizer. And when we look at it from the front, we can see that both of them combined give us this shape. And I think, I believe this is called the H configuration uh, because it looks like an H. And uh, the idea is that you've got your main horizontal stabilizer over here, and then the vertical stabilizer stabilizers are just on the wing tips, basically. Okay, great. So the way we're going to do this is similar to what we did for the wing and empennage in the aircraft section. And that is also similar to what we did in the tail section. So we're just going to create an airfoil section in, um, on, the, on the plane of symmetry, and then we're just going to extrude it outwards to create our horizontal stabilizer. Then we're going to add this vertical stabilizer on its wingtip. Great, so let's get started. So I'm going to create a sketch on the right plane. And the first thing I want to do is map out the cord. So I'm just going to grab my line tool. And um, I'm also going to hide my tail body for now. And I'm just, going to, I'm just going to draw a straight line from here to here. And this is representing kind of like my cord length. Um, and then I'm going to create spline, control point spline, and I'm just going to draw an airfoil section by eye. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect if you are doing this for visual purposes, but if you're doing this for more professional purposes and you want to run simulations, I recommend uh, deciding which airfoil you want to use, importing that airfoil and then tracing that out, or using a more sophisticated tool like airfoil tools on Fusion. Okay, so I'm just going to um, do something like that. And I'm just going to mirror this now. And there we have it. That's our pretty basic airfoil shape ready. And I'm going to finish the sketch. And obviously, we have created this on the mid plane. So what we need to do is extrude this outwards. Again, you can see that there is a slight mismatch between the blueprints here because blueprints were of, not of that high quality. Um, but I'm going to take this into account, and it shouldn't be a problem for me. But uh, once again, if you're doing this for more professional purposes, make sure you buy the actual blueprints and um, trace it out from there. Okay, so I'm going to click Extrude, and the profile I want to extrude is this one and this one. And I'm going to go to the top plane, and I'm just going to extrude this out. Now, in this case, obviously, because we started from the plane of symmetry, we can just go ahead and create this as a, uh, as a symmetric extrusion. Um, however, we can notice over here that we've got, this is sort of like an, at an angle and it's not straight. So we might want to slice off uh, a bit of the uh, horizontal stabilizer. And I don't want to do that twice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create it for one side, complete the entire setup, and then just mirror it later on. It works really well. Okay, so I'm just going to extrude this all the way to here. And I'm going to press OK. Obviously, the reason why I extruded this and not sweep and swept it is because the, the geometry is relatively simple. It's two straight lines just going down. So extrusion works really well in this case. Great. Now, the next thing I want to do is work on splitting the horizontal stabilizer. Great. So the way I'm going to 
split this up is just using a simple line tool. So I'm just going to create a new sketch on the top plane. I'm just going to grab the line tool and just do something like this. And we can use this as our cutting knife when we are splitting the body. So let's finish the sketch. So I'm going to split the body and the body I want to split is this one and the splitting tool is this one. I'm just going to press OK. And you can see that it's sort of created two of these bodies now. And the latest one is the one that we don't want, so the highlighted one. So I'm just going to right click on this in the tree and I'm going to remove this. Great, as simple as that. So now we've got this body that sort of has this inclined cut on the edge. Okay, next thing we are going to do is map this boomerang shape. I know I keep calling it the boomerang, but it does look like one, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the tip of the airfoil section, and I'm going to press P on my keyboard to project, and I'm just going to project this one over here. I'm also going to uh, grab my line tool. I'm going to draw a line from um, the leading edge to the trailing edge, and there we go. So what we really want to do now is also map an airfoil that is perpendicular to this airfoil and then sweep that out to create this boomerang shape. Alternatively, you could also just have a rectangular cross section if you really wanted to, but that would be way too simple and I do want to add a little bit of detail even though this is purely for visual purposes. So let's do that. So we've created this line. I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch. Then I'm going to go to Construct, Plane at Angle, and I'm going to click on this chord line that we've just created. Now we're going to go to the front view and you can see that what it's done here is this is its zero degree angle. And it looks a bit confusing to us because we're wondering why is that its zero degree angle? And I think it's because it has something to do with the fact, uh, it has something to do with the way we split the tip off. So I'm just going to um, map it out a little bit similar to its plane. So instead of minus 125 or minus 130, maybe I want to do minus 127.5 minus, and there we go. And that looks as parallel as it can be for now. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I want to draw, an, I want to create a new sketch on top of this new uh, profile that we just created. Okay, and let's zoom in, press P on our keyboard again, make sure we have specified entity selected. And I'm just going to um, I'm just going to click on that chord line we created earlier and press OK. And now even if I hide the body, you can see that we still have that uh, highlighted. So what I want to do now is uh, create an airfoil perpendicular to it um, using that as a chord line. So let's go back and finish the sketch. Uh, right click on this and edit the sketch so we know we're in the correct plane. So that's the one that we want. Create, spline, control point spline. And obviously this is going to be our leading edge. So I'm just going to drop that somewhere there and have that as our leading edge, uh, sorry, trailing edge, there we go. And that line is still selected. So what we can do now is just mirror this. So mirror, object, this one, mirror, this one. Press OK, and there we go. So we've got our both sections of our um, section that we want to sweep. OK, you can go ahead and finish sketch now. And once again, what we can do now is just create a new sketch on top of our wing tip. So that's where we want to now map our um, rail geometry. Okay, so I'm just going to hide this body for now because we don't want to create any confusion. And what I want to do is select the line tool, go to the trailing edge, highlight that, go back to the right view, and just map this out till there. Perfect. And again, just repeat the same process for the top section. And I know I'm sort of walking through this fast, but basically we're pretty much doing the same thing we've done for the tail section and the same thing we've done for the horizontal section. We're basically just creating a profile and then either extruding it or sweeping it with rails. That's why it's a little bit faster than what I usually do. But hopefully you've done this enough times already for you to know what, what I'm trying to do here. And as always, if you do have any questions, please do leave them in the comments below. Um, or you can also slow the video down if, uh, if, if that helps. Um, but in general, I think it's always nice to see the end product and then walk back through it. And then it sort of makes more sense as to what I was trying to do in the first place. 
So again, I'm just going to create a new spline from that point over there. So that's our leading edge. And I'm just going to follow this curve over here. And then from there to there. Okay. Perfect. Good. So now we have our um, we have our profile that is to be swept, and we also have our path, and we also have our guide rail. So let's try that out. So let's finish the sketch and go ahead and do that. So just open your sketches, and we don't need that one anymore. So this is the profile that we want, and these are my um, paths, and these are my guide rails. So let's go to create and sweep. And the type you want is path plus guide rail, similar to what we did in the tail section. The profile you want to select is this one and this one. The path is going to be this one. And the guide rail is going to be this one. So let's try and select this one as the guide rail as well and see what it does. Okay, it doesn't like that. So let's just do the upper one for now and make sure the extent is full extents. Okay, and go and press OK and check whether this works. So from the right profile, it does. It's perfect. Okay, either you can mirror this if you want, but I have already drawn the other half of the sketch more accurately, so that's what I'm going to do. And just go ahead and, oops, not revolve, but create, sweep. The profile you want to sweep is this one and this one. The path you want to sweep is this one. And the guide rail we want is this one. And you can just go ahead and join this, or if you want, you can create a new body out of this. I'm okay with joining it, so I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. And there we have it. So we have now with us the tail and the horizontal and also the vertical section. So depending on how you like this, you could make the vertical section a little bit thicker if you wanted to. I know my airfoil section right now is really thin, but when you look at it from the front section, it sort of matches really well. It's just offset by a little mount, but the general shape and the angles look pretty good from the side and also from the top view. So I'm happy with this. Um, obviously it is a little bit thin, so what I could do is go back and change my airfoil section. So I'm just going to right click on where I made this airfoil, so I'm going to edit sketch. And instead of making it this thin, maybe I want to increase the size like this. And hopefully when I finish the sketch, Fusion should go back in real time and make all the edits for me. So finish sketch. And let's see how this looks like now. So from the top view, from the side, it should look the same. And from the front, it should look a little different. There we go. I think that looks a lot better. So I'm going to leave it at this now. So I know these videos are getting shorter and shorter and they're getting less frequent. I do have my exams in under one month and I'm also working on my final year project, uh, which takes up a lot of time. So Hopefully that's okay, but obviously I'm always here to clear any doubts. If you do have any questions, if you do have any more suggestions, please do leave those in the comments below. So that's it for this video, guys. Again, once again, I do apologize that these videos are getting shorter, but hopefully they've, they've still been helpful. And uh, in the next video, we are going to be focusing on the rotor section, so similar to what we have over here. And I also haven't covered this section over here, but it's pretty much the same thing as how we did for the horizontal and vertical stabilizer. So you just pretty much follow the same thing and you'll be fine. And in the next one, we can focus more on the rotor section, which might also be split into two different videos, but we'll see how that goes. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please do leave your comments below, hit like and do subscribe. It does help me out a lot. If you'd like to support me further, please do subscribe to my Patreon from as little as one pound a month. And also do check out my music channel if that's something that you're interested in. Alright guys, take care and I'll see you in the next video.